Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we are going to be uh, learning how to import video into Flash. It, the entire importing, compressing, and conversion process. We're going to be going over all of it. And by the end of this video you're going to know exactly what you need to do to get your video into Flash and get it working. So you can see here we have created this uh, video. I just, well not created the video, I shot the video and then imported it into Flash. So this is what we're going to be working with. Notice we can skip ahead. We've got some cue points set up that we're just using our little seek button to get to. And that's it. So it's pretty simple. I'm going to double click to open my library. I'm going to delete that video and I'm going to delete the instance of the FLV playback uh, component in my library. There we go. I'm just going to set my background back to white. And it's as if we've just opened a new file, which if you're just starting, go File, New, and open up a new Flash file. I'm not going to open up a new Flash file, however, because I have one opened here. Now, we are using Adobe Flash CS3, but you also want to be able to follow along no problem in Flash 8. So, the first thing that you ought to do once you've opened your file is go ahead and save that somewhere on your hard drive. Your file, Save As and choose a spot. Now I recommend that you just set aside a folder for your flash video. If you're creating a flash file that is going to have flash video, I recommend that you set aside a folder for that just so you have all your video files together. And that's primarily because of the way that we are going to be linking the flash video to our FLA file and in, in the end to our SWF file. The F FLA and SWF I should say both need to know where this FLV file is, the flash video file is, so it just knows where it goes to get the video that it's going to be displaying. It will all become clear later on when we actually make our FLV file. So for now I'm just going to save this file as importedvideo.fla. Save, it's going to ask for to replace. Yes, I do want to replace it. So, here we are. The first thing we need to do, well, actually, before we get started, let me just open up this other FLA file and just show you. These are the supported file types for video in Flash. You can open any one of these five video files and convert it to an FLV file. Now, you can also, obviously, open up .FLV files, but you won't have to convert them. We're going to go through the whole conversion process. You can use .AVI files, .DV files, .MPEG files, .MOV files, QuickTime Movie or .wmv files. Now, I almost exclusively use .mov files. Occasionally I'll use an AVI file or two. I almost never use any of these other video files uh, for my work. So, we're going to be dealing with a .avi file in just a minute. But the settings, as far as I know, are all pretty much the same. So, I'm going to close this file. I don't want to save the changes. And we're going to look at importing this .avi file. We're going to go File, Import, Import Video. We get the Import Video Wizard. Now, the first thing Flash asks us is where our video file is. Is it on the computer or is it already deployed to a web server? Do you already have it online somewhere? If you already have it online, you can just punch the URL in and it will grab, it will grab that or if it's on a Flash video streaming service or a Flash media server. Again, those have to do with streaming Flash video, which is very possible, but that's another, uh, that's a completely different bridge to cross. So we're not going to touch on that here in this video. But if you would like, you could do some research on Flash video and streaming. So we need to find this file on our computer. So we're going to go browse, and I have here I have this FLV already created from this AVI, so we're going to use this AVI here, Forest Video 0006.AVI. Double click, brings that right into there. We're going to go next. Now, Flash is going to ask me, how would you like to deploy this video? Would you like me to set it up as a progressive download from a web server? Would you like me to stream the Flash video from a streaming service, which we obviously don't want because this is not streaming video? Would you like me to stream it from Flash? a Flash Media Server. Again, we're not streaming this video, so we don't want to do that. As a mobile device, which it's not going to allow me to do anyway. You can see that it's not even selectable. As a mobile device bundled in SWF, to finish what I was saying, um, which obviously is for mobile devices, handheld uh, devices, etc., etc., etc. Would you like me to embed this video in the SWF and play it in the timeline? Now, notice when you click this, 
Flash gives you this warning that embedding this video is likely to cause some serious audio issues. The, you know, synchronizing the audio with the video becomes a very big problem when you embed your video directly into your FLA file. And Flash says this option is only recommended for short video clips with no audio track. So if Flash is telling you use short video clips with no audio, it's pretty bad. And the last option, which is grayed out and you can hardly see, is linked QuickTime video for publishing to QuickTime. Now, that is an option if you are working with a .mov file, um, but that's an old, outdated option, and I don't recommend you use it. Best here is progressive download from a web server. So we're going to use progressive download from a web server, but note that the deployment method requires, requires Flash Player 7 or newer. That's Flash Player 7, 8, or 9 or anything beyond that if we are at that point when you are watching this video. So hit the next button. And now we have our encoding process. This is the compression stage of importing your video. Now this entire encoding section is completely skipped if you just import an FLV file because an FLV file has already been compressed and converted or encoded to a flash video file. So encoding profiles, these are basically just presets from Flash where Flash chooses your encoding options and it also chooses your quality. So if you are working with Flash 7, you need to export something to Flash 7, you can just choose Flash 7. A modem quality, which is extremely low quality, low, medium, or high quality. Again, the higher the kilobits per second, the higher the video quality, but the longer the load and wait time. Flash 8, we have our modem low and high quality, and we also have DV small and large. Now, Flash 8, if you're using Flash Player 8 or better, I recommend that you use this uh, encoding because the Flash 8 encoding, as opposed to Flash 7 encoding, is or produces a much smaller file size with higher quality. So you get the best of both worlds. So if you're using Flash 8 or newer, use that Flash 8 encoding method. However, we're not going to use any of these presets. We are going to do our own custom encoding over here in the video tab. So flip over to the video tab, and here we have to choose our video codec. What video codec are we going to use to encode this video? The Sorensen Spark or the Onto VP6. Now the Sorensen Spark is the Flash Player 7 codec, so we're going to stick with the Onto VP6. However, there is a third video codec which was released back in December of 2007. It is called H.264 and obviously you can see it's not even in Flash CS3. Hopefully in the near future Flash CS4 certainly I would think will have H.264 support which is going to be a third video codec that you'll have to choose from. So on to VP6 is what we're going to use for now. If your video has transparency it makes sure you encode an alpha channel. If it doesn't have transparency, leave that alone. Don't mess around with that. Frame rate, we can leave it same as source, but because this is a video for the web, to decrease the file size a little more, somewhere between 15 and 20 is good. So you could choose 15, you could choose 25, um, or you could come in here and just punch in your own number. I'm going to say 18. Quality, again, you got your medium, which would be 400 kilobits per second. You got your high, 700 per second. Low, or you can choose custom and just punch in your own number. I'm going to say around 350. Keyframe placement, we're going to leave that at automatic. Let's come over here to audio. Now, this video has absolutely no audio, so it's really going to be hard for you to see what I'm doing here in the audio section because I'm really not doing anything here in the audio section. But beyond that, most of the stuff is grayed out. When you come to the audio section, you're going to have to make sure that encode audio is checked on. The only audio format you have to choose from is MP3. So all that's left for you to do is set your data rate. And again, the data rate, the higher kilobits per second, you get higher quality, but you get a longer load time. So it really depends on how much the sound means to your video. Obviously, if it's a video of somebody speaking, you want the audio to be pretty well. If it's a video of somebody walking down the street and you've got a lot of background noise, you could probably cut the data rate of the sound to save on some file size because the sound really isn't an essential thing or an essential element of your video. Again, I have no sound in this video, so I don't have any sound options to mess with. Okay, cue points. Cue points are a really cool thing um, that you can use here in Flash Video. They're essentially, you can think of them as landmarks or stopping points or keyframes of your Flash Video. 
inserting them and creating them is very easy to do and you can use them to do all kinds of cool things. You can use them to navigate around your actual video. If you've got a very long video and you'd like people to be able to jump to a certain you know, precise time in that video or an exact moment that something happens, you can do that with cue points. You can control you know, going to them via action script. You can include buttons in the flash skin you use to uh, skin our video, which we're going to look at in just a minute. Or you can even set up a cue point to trigger something to happen outside of that video, something in your flash file, so you get to a point in the video where you want the, your entire flash website to change colors or a new window or something to pop up. You can make that happen at a certain point in the video by setting a cue point there. Now, we're going to take a look at using navigation cue points. There are three cue points, however. Action script cue points, event cue points, and navigation cue points. Navigation cue points allow you to use that cue point as a navigational point. It allows you to go to it using buttons, you know, an action script. It allows you to use the buttons that we will be adding to our flash skin. So the navigation cue point is pretty straightforward. The event cue point is the cue point that triggers some kind of event at that exact moment in that video. You know, it can be somewhere in your flash video, wherever. It can be in your uh, your FLA file if this Flash video is just part of a greater interface or a bigger Flash site. Um, and then action script cue points are not available here in this dialog. You use them um, when you are writing with action script. You can add cue points to video via action script. So we're going to add a cue point here at the beginning. You just scrub your timeline or your scrub bar to wherever you want to place a cue point. I'm going to place one at the beginning and end to start things off. So I'm going to choose this and I'm going to say beginning, hit the tab key, and uh, I'm going to scroll all the way to the end. And I'm going to add one. I'm going to say ending, the tab key. Now I'm going to come, I'm going to find the exact moment where the camera hits the forest floor, right, right about there, somewhere around there. I'm just going to add one here and I'm going to call it ground. I'm going to hit tab. So you can see that we have these three named cue points. It tells the exact moment in time down to the millisecond that the cue point is placed. And then the event, or the type, excuse me, for now is event. We want to switch this to navigation. We want these to be navigation cue points. Notice there's no uh, action script type. Now let's go over to the crop and resize tab. In here we can crop and resize our video. I do not, however, recommend that you crop or resize your video in Flash. If you have some kind of professional or semi-professional video editing program, you should probably do all your cropping, resizing, and video trimming in that. However, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and break the carnal rule that I just set, and I'm going to resize my video uh, just to make the encoding process a little faster so we're not sitting here for too, too long. Even though this is only a 30-second video, if I were to make this video or leave it at its original large size, it would still take quite a few minutes to uh, to encode. So. I'm just going to resize it to a 400 by 300 pixel video. I'm going to choose next, and here is where the skinning happens. The skin of anything is simply the way its controls and its interface look. This can this is true for anything from media players to our little Flash video player here within Flash. So you can choose any skin you want. Flash has a whole ton of pre-built skins. You can even bring in a custom-made skin, which is slightly off-screen here, the option for a custom skin. There possibly you can see it at the very bottom. But I'm going to stick with the default skins Flash gives us. We actually have two main categories of skins, a skin under, which places the skin underneath the video, or a skin over, which you can see is going to place the skin over top of our video. And beyond that, we have a bunch of buttons that we can either include or exclude from our bar of options. You can see skin overall will include all the buttons but no captions. So don't include that closed captioning button. Or skin overall with no full screen or no closed captioning. Skin overall which is no full screen. So we have a whole bunch of options. I am going to use skin under all, no volume, no caption, and no full screen capabilities. Now the only reason I'm choosing no volume is because I happen to know that my video does not have any audio in it. It still gives me a mute option, but I don't really, I'm not really worried about that. It's going to be as if the video is muted already. But we have these seek buttons, and these seek buttons we can use in conjunction with our cue points. 
You know, going forward will bring us to the next cue point. Going back will bring us back to the cue point before. We can also choose a color of our skin. And if you have your color panel up and you have your full spectrum thing, you can, or your full color spectrum, full spectrum thing, um, you can just go over there and grab any old color you want. I'm just going to choose a nice light desaturated green, like so. I'm going to choose next. Now we get a nice summary of everything we've done, where the file to be encoded is located, where the file will be located once it is encoded, the FLV file that is, and the fact that the video component uses a skin that's copied next to your FLA, and this file needs to be deployed to your server as well when you upload all of your files. Deploy, when Flash says deploy, it simply means uploaded. So we're going to take a look at that, and I'll explain that in a little more depth in just a quick second. So I'm going to hit finish and we get the flash video encoding process. It's going to, telling me that it's going to take approximately two minutes to finish this. So I'm going to sit here and wait. And the file has finished encoding and we have a .flv file now dropped right smack dab in the center of our stage with our controller beneath it. Now, we can select this, and this is an instance of this FLV playback component. So we can select this, and we have a bunch of parameters in here we can also edit if we so wish. You can see you can choose a different skin color once you've done that. You can choose all kinds of things. So we're not going to mess around with the parameters. I just wanted to point that out. But here, if I save my file, just go File, Save, I now want to export this as an SWF file, the entire thing. This white background, which actually... Speaking of white, I want to change the color of that to match our skin. So I'm going to choose my background color, and I'm just clicking and holding. I've got the eyedropper. I'm just going to select that green. And there we go. We have a nice green background matching our skin. And uh, we're ready to take this flash file and export it. Now, by going Control Test Movie, you automatically export an SWF file, and it appears right next to your .fla file in whatever folder it's sitting in. You can also go File, Publish, and that will publish your SWF file and whatever other files you wish to publish, that you, any other files you've specified in your Publish settings. So I'm going to just save this, Command or Control S, and then Command Return or Control Enter to test the movie. And you can see here our video is. Notice if we hit the Next button, it automatically pops to the next cue point. We hit the Next button, it takes us right to the end. We go back, we go back to the last cue point and go all the way back to the beginning if we hit the back button again. So our video works perfectly. Now one last thing that I would like to show you before we finish this is notice we have a whole bunch of files in here now. If I, well I can delete these files here. These files just completely ignore them. The files we're worried about are not this file, this file's junk. We have this imported video.swf, and this is, if I double click, you're going to see, it is the video I just showed you. Right there. That's that SWF file. This is the skin that's sitting underneath the flash video. So this, this SWF and this .flv file all have to be uploaded to your web server when you upload this SWF file. If you simply upload this SWF file, the flash file will not know where the either the skin or the video file is because right now it is simply calling out and sending you can think of it as when you send somebody out to get something if you tell them hey go you know here here and here and get me this you know they go there there and there and get you that and they bring it back to you but if the flash file does not know or is not sending out its little messenger to the right location and nothing's there it has nothing to bring back, so you're not going to have any video showing up in your SWF file. Same thing is true for the skin. If it can't find this SWF file in the folder, because right now it's just saying, hey, these guys are right here in the same folder with me, so just it's calling out to these files and they're right there beside it, so they just pop right in and display. So you just have to make sure when you upload these files, you place them all in the same folder and upload them all in the same folder to uh, your web server, and everything will work wonderfully. So that is it. That is how you import and convert or encode any kind of video file, convert it to a flash video, and display it in an SWF file. That's how it's done. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please go check out the site. That is www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.